Hi, and welcome to my channel, Tony's Cool Tools. If it's your first time, thanks for stopping. I've had a number of viewers asking me to review the sawhorse or log holder. It goes by many names. Now, as you can see, it looks brand new. I picked it up at a trade show about eight to 10 years ago. And check this out. Do I really need another splitter? Can you guess what's underneath here? Leave me a comment as to what you think I'm picking up. The question we're gonna to try to answer today is, does this really help or is it more work? And very few people here in the US use the log holder or sawhorse. When we drop a tree or one like this one happens to fall over the driveway, we have a lot of limb wood that we have to take care of. And it's somewhat of a pain because it's not super easy to cut. And naturally, regardless of how careful I am, I end up hitting the dirt or some gravel and it dulls up my chain. And I gotta stop and resharpen. And naturally, if we check the forest floor, there's plenty of branches laying around. Now, I don't think there's gonna be any argument that limbwood gives you more BTUs than a piece the same size out of the center of the tree. The tight rings and the dense wood definitely give you more BTUs. And I love burning limbwood. I try to keep it into a separate pile so that I can burn that first in the early season. While watching a number of the videos, one thing I noticed is most of the European or Scandinavian countries like this tool. And we all know a lot of the wood there is smaller. So when you watch the videos, there's piles of limb wood or small diameter trees. So I could see where it makes sense using this. Let me take you through the specs on this unit. Now I will say this unit is extremely compact and well made. It's made out of two inch tubing here. The legs on it are approximately 48 inches, stands about three feet tall, and the working height is about 23 inches. Oh, and I almost forgot, the unit weighs just under 20 pounds. All right, enough talking. Let's go do some cutting and show you how this thing works. Now the way you adjust for different diameter logs is right over here. You just bring this up, move this over, there are holes right over here for the different diameters that you want. Just slide it back in. If I could find the hole. No comments, please. And there you go. That's as easy as it gets. Now I wanna point something out. Typically I'd probably use my MS-261 on this. It's lighter and a little bit easier to use, but I had the MS-500 fueled up, sharpened and ready to go. So I wanted to show you how to use it with a larger saw and some things that you have to be concerned about. Let's start it up and start cutting. Oh, while putting on the PPE, I did warm the saw up, just in case someone's gonna ask. And as you can see, the log fell down. What I wanted to show was the fact that if you don't have it set for the right diameter, I have it set for one inch logs. So when I put it on the next setting, you'll see it'll hold it better. I just changed it to the next increment. And what I do is I just put the log in and I push down. Now it's held in place. Now I can cut again. So a couple of key learnings. First, so the limb or the log is suspended 23 inches, so there's plenty of safe room to cut underneath it. The other benefit of using the sawhorse is you can cut from either side, which is really nice. So as you can see, the diameter on this end is much smaller. So instead of using the tip of my saw, I'm gonna bring the saw back here so that my dogs will hold the log and not pull the whole thing over. 
let me show you. A number of the ash logs that I get from Logger John are four, five, six, seven inches in diameter. The larger ones are probably too much to manhandle, but the smaller pieces I can do easily with my six inch log tongs. Either the Fiskar or the Baco. And they're super easy on your back. Load this in. And we're ready to cut. Here we go. And that's how easy it is. I had mentioned earlier that if I was going to be doing this a lot, I'd probably be using my MS-261. But what I found was the top handle saw is awesome for doing these, this limb wood. Let me show you. As you can see, real quick and easy. Here's another tip. If you have a UTV trailer or a small utility trailer, you can hook it up and you can put the workhorse inside so you don't have to keep bending down and picking up the wood. Let me show you. I'm also using the small saw naturally. It's much more convenient here than the bigger one. And I'm not gonna hit the metal bars on the side. And that's how easy it is. Hopefully you found this video informative. And if so, you can now make a decision on whether the saw holder is right for you or not. So if this was informative, please like, share, and subscribe, and give me a thumbs up. And remember, pass it forward. Make the world a better place. And don't be a tool. Watch Tony's Cool Tools.